Hi, I'm Hansen, and today I'll be giving you a quick tour of MLflow. This video, I'll be quickly giving an overview of what the tool does, what problem it solves, as well as some of the key benefits you'll be introduced to when you incorporate MLflow into your workflow. Following that, I'll be giving a demo to show you how to install it and get it set up. So, what is MLflow? MLflow is an open source platform to manage the end-to-end -end machine learning lifecycle. It provides a streamlined way to build, deploy, and monitor models. This piece of software is essentially a server that you can deploy to any system, whether it's on the cloud, your local host, or some remote on-premise server. Team members can then run their experiments on any system, point to the MLflow server to collect metrics data and artifacts for easy comparisons and collaboration. You probably already know that the ML lifecycle involves a lot of people. I'm sure there's a lot of steps in the ML lifecycle than just the three that I've mentioned in the slides here, but this further proves that the ML lifecycle is getting more and more complex as the years go by. With each step filled with engineers working in their own field of expertise, those who are focused on model deployment might be concerned with finding an easy way to host these ML models to serve to the masses, while data scientists are concerned with building a model with the highest accuracy. With MLflow, everything is all essentially in one place. In fact, according to Algorithmia's 2021 report on enterprise trends in ML, 66% of companies take a month or more to build a model, and after that, 64% of companies take an additional month to deploy it. So what are the key benefits to MLflow? I've mentioned some of these in the previous slides, but to summarize, MLflow provides an easy way to track experiments. Users across the team can post results of all the runs, as well as model artifacts to this MLflow server. The server can then provide version control to models. Additionally, MLflow supports a whole bunch of ML frameworks, such as sklearn and PyTorch, just to name a few. MLflow also is able to be deployed in containers, cloud servers, you name it. One of my favorite things about MLflow is the ability to also mix and match your setup. For instance, you can tell MLflow to store model artifacts in an S3 bucket and host the results of your experiment in some remote server elsewhere. It's very modular, but for more information on this and to uh, look more into different setups and scenarios, refer to the additional resource links in the articles below. Now for the live demo. With this demo, we'll be showing you how to install MLflow, setting up the server, how to put your results to the MLflow server, serving your model and registering it for version control. So let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is install MLflow. So to do this, open up any shell. So for me, I have a VS Code instance open. I'm going to do pip3 install MLflow. So you can see I've already had it installed prior. Now, once MLflow is installed, you should be able to run the MLflow command and you'll start to see and verify that it works, you'll see that some of the help commands start to open up. So the next thing we're gonna do is open up a second shell. So for this, I'm going to start the MLflow server here essentially. And uh, for this demo, I'm going to opt in just using a file directory as my backend storage and uh, going to use the MLflow server command and indicate uh, with the backend store URI flag where that uh, all those artifacts, metrics, logs, and things of that nature are going to be stored, right? So the command here is MLflow server. I pass back and store URI as well as the URL or URI, right, to where I'm going to be storing things. Once you have this open, uh, you'll notice that if you go into localhost, port 5000, you'll see a dashboard. Um, yours might not be in dark mode. This is just a Chrome extension, uh, but you'll start seeing that the dashboard has two major components in, uh, with what's in front of you right now. So on the left-hand sidebar, you'll see a list of all the experiments, and you can kind of consider these as workspaces in the MLflow sort of uh, ecosystem, right? So uh, on the right-hand side, you'll have a list of all your runs. And you can see here in the columns, uh, if I zoom in a little bit, you can start seeing the name of the run. Uh, you can start seeing who ran it, how long it took, as well as where where it was run from the source, right? So going back to our VS Code here, uh, let's run an example, right? So the first thing that I'm going to run is just cloning the MLflow uh, GitHub repo here. And essentially, once this, once this is uh, cloned, I'm going to CD into the sklearn logistic regression example. So I'm going to go CD, MLflow, 
uh, examples, sklearn regression. Okay, awesome. Going to just unsplit this terminal here so that we can focus on just this. Now that we're inside this uh, sklearn logistic regression example, I'm going to now point this experiment to my local host server, right? So uh, where I ran it was again, local host port 5,000. So I'm going to export the system variable here, export ML flow tracking URI. I'm going to point it to local host port 5,000. So once I do that, my shell has an understanding of where I pointed it to. So everything that I run, uh, as long as your Python script has uh, ML flow imported, as well as uh, you manually indicating like, okay, these are the metrics that I want to measure, or you can use the auto uh, auto logging feature uh, if you're using a supported ML um, ML framework. That's also linked in the documentation below in the article. I'm going to essentially now uh, do an ML run, right? So just to give you a little insight of what uh, is inside this example, I'm going to open up some of the scripts here. So inside this example, you'll notice that there's three files, ML project, uh, Python and YAML, as well as the Python training script. So I'm just going to open all of them for you guys to take a look at. So uh, for here, this is just essentially a YAML that defines um, everything that MLflow needs to run. You are able to define these um, in the CLI, as well as just write them manually in the Python script so that you don't have to use any MLflow CLI commands. But for good practice, they essentially have it structured like this and doing it as such, you can define all your configs in a very easy manner. So the uh, other benefit of um, doing it in an MLflow project like this is you're also able to just do MLflow run and if whatever directory you're in, right? Uh, what you can also do here is you have the ability to use any sort of environment you want. So for this example, we have pyenv, and we're using that as our virtual environment, but Conda is also supported as well as Docker images as well. So you can actually define a Docker image here if you really needed a specific, uh, specific environment, specific uh, set of packages, and you wanted to just work and have that sort of uh, replaceability and reproducibility um, that Docker provides, right? So for here, we have our entry points. So we're just calling the train Python script. And you can see here that all I did in this, uh, or well, all this GitHub repo did was just import MLflow as well as import the sklearn um, API from MLflow. And it is just simply logging the uh, model as well as the score. And again, uh, for uh, ML frameworks like PyTorch, there is an auto log, uh, an auto log metrics uh, function where you can just pass in the model and it's going to report loss and all those other things too. So I'm pretty sure you'll also know uh, this is pretty familiar, the pyem YAML. So you define your Python version, uh, what dependencies you need. So this is a pretty simple one, right? So now we're going to run it. So let's do ml flow run. Since we're already in the directory, we're going to just do dot. And we're going to name the experiment name uh, logistic regression example. So I'm just going to do lr example. Now I'm going to set the run name to just first run. So when you first do this, uh, it's going to create the experiment if it hasn't already. Uh, for me, since I've ran this prior, PyEnv already has an environment that's specifically curated for this MLflow experiment. So it's it's probably running a lot quicker than uh, uh, what you're running right now if you're just following along for the first time. But it will create the environment and then it'll initiate and activate the environment and then run the MLflow experiment inside. And then right after when it's done, it's essentially going to let you know that there's a succeeded um, uh, log here. And once you go back to your local host and, or once you go back to the MLflow server and you refresh your page, you should be able to see it. So let's go back to our browser. Let's refresh. You'll notice that now there's an LR example here 
And if we click here, you'll start seeing that there is a first run. And inside first run, you'll be able to see model artifacts over here, as well as the path to where all of this resides, um, a unique ID, and uh, your metrics here. So for our example, we've only really logged the score. So this is the only thing that's available to us right now. But this demo really is just to show you uh, some of the um, some of the features that MLflow provides, as well as just like just to get you familiar with how uh, MLflow is kind of placing all this stuff and how you can use it. So let's go back to our demo here. So the next thing we're going to do after we've made the model and we've reported the metrics, we can now serve the model, right? So we, what we want to do is find the uh, find the run ID. We can use the path of the model, um, and we now can use the MLflow models serve uh, command, right? So going back to our browser, we can either use this run ID up on the top left, or we can actually just paste this entire path um, and and host this. So there's a little neat copy button here that we can press. So for me, I'm just going to copy this path. I'm going to go back to VS Code. And now I'm going to type in MLflow, models, serve, and dash M for models. And I'm going to just paste this entire path here. And then I'm going to uh, signify that I want this port for this model to be just one, two, three, four. So as you can see here, started the model find, was able to find it. And now I'm just going to send using Perl a data frame over to see if it can call inference. So I'm going to open up a, another shell here. I'm just going to send this. So it's just the curl command with a data frame. And I gave it a vector 5, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 1. Uh, these are just arbitrary numbers that I made up. I'm going to send it. You can see that it returns back a predictions array. So the other thing that we can do too now is register this model. So let's say, for instance, that this model or this run specifically is something that we want to put into production or we want to stage it, right? So going back to our browser, this is done in a very, very uh, neat way. So you can see here in our run, there's a button here that says uh, register model. So when we register this, we can actually select uh, which model that we want to dedicate this run to. So since I don't have models yet, uh, I'm just going to create a model called, uh, let's see, what do we call it? Demo model, right? So I'm going to click create model, demo model. I'm going to register this. Once this is registered, you can see that there's a little check mark here indicating that it's pushed. And if you go to the models tab on top, you'll notice now that there is one version in demo models. When we click this, you'll see that this is uh, version one. And uh, you can see the stage here. So if we go into version one, you can select the stage, right? So let's just say it's done staging. Everyone on the team is like, okay, this is the model that we want to use. I'm going to set this into production and I'm going to click okay. So now that this is in production, uh, what you can actually do here is going back to VS Code. Let's just go back to where our model is being hosted on port 124, right? Uh, one, two, three, four. I'm going to cancel this. And now I want to just do the same command MLflow model serve dash M, right? But in this case, I now have a new link, which is models demo model production, right? So pasting the command here, MLflow model serve dash M. And now I have this new link where I can call it. And note that even though I'm doing everything from the CLI, uh, if you're using Python, uh, R, or any other supported language that MLflow uh, has an API for, you're actually able to just write this in the script. So if you have an application and you just want to call the MLflow serve command right off the bat, you can actually do it within code, not from the CLI. Just for convenience and for this demo, we're doing it from the CLI, right? So with here, uh, MLflow model serve, I'm going to start this. As you can see here, the same model is being served, but the benefit about this is that now, if you have a different model, let's say version two, three, four, um, so on and so forth, you can maintain the same link, right? Uh, as as long as you keep pushing and you just set whatever the 
uh, model that you want uh, as the production model, this all stays the same. And uh, what's really also nice too is like, let's say um, you're, you're, you have an application, uh, you're running inference on this model, and then the model starts drifting and accuracy starts degrading over time. Uh, having this ML ops cycle where you can actually monitor the model out there and say, okay, the accuracy is actually decreasing. Let me go back and retrain this. Well, once you take this model, uh, you can retrain it, run these experiments again, select a candidate run, and then set this model for production again. And then the application essentially just works once you uh, redeploy or rehost it, right? So that pretty much concludes the, uh, the demo here. But hopefully you're able to get a gist of what a typical MLflow installation is, uh, how to get it up and running. And uh, if you want something uh, more complex in sort of uh, infrastructure, uh, feel free to refer to the additional resources that I linked in the article as well. And again, you can list this, uh, you can set this up on a S3 bucket, EWS, uh, or e uh, AWS, EC2 instance, Azure, whatever you name it. Uh, and it should be able to work. So uh, good luck with everything and feel free to uh, refer to this article as many times as needed. So have a good one.